So, this is a video that I've been thinking about doing for some time. Um, the reason being that uh, I've been working on this 3D printer uh, for four and a half years. It's been a great project, but now I'm taking it down. And the reason is, it's a project. I've finished it, I could do more, but I think I'm pretty much finished. So I'm swapping it out for a Prusa i3 or MK3. That will just print me stuff when I need it. it will, the Prusa will be smaller, and there's, well, arguments to be had for having a smaller printer. When I made this printer, the size was part of the goal. I wanted to have 30 by 30 uh, by at least 30 uh, as a print volume. And that part of it turned out really well. At the most, I've had 30 by 30 by 35 centimeters. It's a pretty big uh, volume, but I'm not actually using it that much. Another design goal was being able to print with any kind of filament. I want to print with nylons, which require up to 300 Celsius uh, on the hot end. I can do that, it works well. I want to print with flexible materials, I can do that, it works well. I print with Ninja Flex and also softer filaments, and it's also awesome. But some of the filaments that I want to print now, are, or test new filaments, they are not available as 2.8 millimeters. And, well, since I made a printer four and a half years ago, that was what it was available. So at the time, it was a perfect choice. Now, the business has changed. Uh, people are going for the 1.75 millimeters. It's easier to melt, uh, easier to feed. Um, so, uh, well, that's another argument for swapping the machine out. I could, of course, just change it over. But I had 40-something rolls of filament, which I've now sold off at a very decent price, I'd say. So some lucky guys got uh, 40 rolls at a very good price. So the printer's been through many iterations, uh, and I want to go through uh, some of them. I started out having uh, a ramps-based uh, electronics. It was called Megatronics. It was pretty cool. It had an extra step driver as opposed to ramps, uh, which made it possible to maybe add an extra extruder and other things. It was okay. I used the uh, standard A4988 step drivers. They were kind of noisy, so I swapped them out for uh, a more silent one, the DRV8825, uh, which were more silent, uh, according to my son, which sleeps next door to the printer. Uh, but not all that silent. I then swapped them over to using the step sticks by Vatarot. Really good uh, implementations of the uh, Trinamic drivers, uh, the 2100 driver. The Trinamic drivers are also present on the Replicape, which is the current electronics that I'm using. The Replicape is by far the most advanced 3D printing uh, electronics there is on the market today, I think. Uh, it's run by Beaglebone. It's a full powered one gigahertz PC that runs Octoprint directly as a server. Very nice printing experience. I really like and enjoy that part. I've also done lots of mechanical changes to the machine. It's built using the MakeBlock extrusions. Uh, it could be built using any kind of extrusions. I, I chose them because I used them for prototyping robots, all sorts. Initially, it was all based on 8mm rods. It turns out that if you're making a machine that is 30 by 30 by 30, you need to go up to 10mm rods. You just need the extra stiffness uh, in the machine. For extruders, I've done lots of iterations. The first ones were a weights extruder based uh, around the uh, Bulldog XL extruder motor. And I also used an E3D version 5 hot end. The version 5 hot end was not their best, so I swapped it over to uh, using Hexagon. And the problem with the Bulldog was that it was too heavy, so I wanted to um, make it lighter. So I found this thing called Flex 3 Drive, uh, which was awesome. So I purchased two in hopes that I could build a multi material system using it. Turns out it wasn't all that great. Uh, this was the first iteration. The guy who made them said himself that, oh, sorry, yeah, uh, doesn't really work with soft filaments, which I kind of said it would. Please buy the new version. And they're 95 pounds each. And I couldn't spend another 200 pounds on doing that. So um, I, I skipped on that. The basic idea of the Flex 3 drive is super cool, though. 
you place the steppers on the frame. You have a wire that takes the torsion from the steppers uh, into a super light construction, which will drive the filament at the uh, hot end. So it's a very nice system. It just didn't work when I tested it. And the current version is using uh, E3D's awesome Titan Aero uh, extruder. It works really, really well. I, I've, it has never failed me. It's, it's super easy to maintain. There are these issues. So we have the stepper here, which is more lightweight than other ones I've tested. You have the cooling here for the extruder. Well, you have to have the cooling for the plastic somewhere. So I've stuck it on the back here. It kind of works. Uh, it's not super elegant, but it, 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 I think it's, it's working really well. It's just a kind of big clumsy construction and it's difficult to, to avoid that. The extruder has had these uh, big and clumsy uh, uh, extruder uh, builds all the time. Sideways axis here was uh, lying flat. That prevented some of the access to the hot end and it made many things dif difficult. So I, I swapped it over to this orientation, which is the same as Lulzbutt has done on their printers. And uh, well, it's a good design and well, I've now copied that and I've also copied moving the electronics over to this side. So uh, since I've now copied so much of their design, I feel that mm, I could just as well buy a lost spot, couldn't I? Well, there are some things I have that they don't have, but let's see. Their electronics is really smooth. I'm quite happy with this one also. So you take this off. Uh, you have the power supply here, you have relays for the heat bed here, uh, electronics here. It's, it's very, very smooth. I really do enjoy it. Okay, so what worked? Uh, well, the things that worked really well is, I would say, well, the build itself. It has been a very solid machine now. I can take it out, I can just print, even if I haven't used it in a month, and it will just work. Uh, it's, it's a very solid machine. I have the size but I don't use it. I can use any material that I want, but only if it's available in 2.85 millimeters. Um, I print through Octoprint and I really like that part. So I have a printer that has big format. It can print anything and it just works. So you'd think that makes it a great printer. And indeed it is a good printer. Um, there are some things uh, that I wanted that I couldn't do. So I want to have 1.75 millimeter filament. I want to have the capability of multi-material. The Prusa offers that as an extension. You can just buy it from them and it just works. That's very tempting as opposed to having to build the whole thing yourself. I never got around to build it. Uh, it would be great if I could just use that uh, or something pre-made. Another thing was that initially when I started project Makeblock was really enthusiastic about the printer. In the end, it turned out that all they really wanted was to build another small printer. Uh, they didn't want to build something that was unique, that was bigger, that had, well, you know, more than the typical size. And maybe they were right. I'm not using the size as I thought I would. So, mm, yeah, it might be. If I need size, I would just buy a big uh, CR10, I think, just for printing large, big parts. Those that I know that have those and print big parts, they have issues of their own. There's, it's not that easy to print big parts. So I'm not sure that's a super, super smart thing to do either. So anyway, uh, the printer is now getting disassembled and I'll use the parts for new builds. I have no specific plans, but I'm sure I'll find some good use for them.